What's up? Good morning. It is Wednesday morning today. I've only got two exams left before the end of the semester, so I'm really excited. And because we're at the end of the semester, I thought it's high time for uh, lessons learnt, top five lessons learnt from a university semester online and at home. Uh, these are just some of the things that I've learned in the past few months, some of the things that I've been thinking about and things that I've learned during quarantine that I want to take forward when we eventually go back to varsity normally in person and on campus. Uh, some lessons that I think are worth sharing and that are worth implementing. So, straight into it! So the first thing is that I don't need to go to all of my lectures. This might be self-explanatory to you if you've got a degree where you've always been teaching yourself or you know, you've just got shit lecturers and that. But I don't need to go to every single one of my lectures. Being at home and working on predominantly, predominantly project-based assignments and assessments where we've just got one big project or a huge practical to build and that with a strict time deadline, uh, that kind of lends itself to leaving all the work and all the theory and all the small, tiny little assignments you should be doing um, every day and just focusing for a couple of days at a time on a huge project or an assignment or a practical. Uh, and that flow and that deep focus on one topic at a time has really allowed me at the moment to like get stuff done. I got like a really good mark for my EMK practical. I got, uh, I got really good at focusing and studying the day before some tests just solidly on one subject and not delineating my time between 12 different subjects like you do at Varsity. And in particular, working on the theory and that that I missed out on when it suited me and at the time of day that was good for my learning ability has really helped. I've been getting up at 6 every morning to graph and doing lectures at quarter past 6 to quarter past 8, then going and eating breakfast. And then in the afternoon when I get tired, uh, at about between 1 and 4 in the afternoon, like where my learning ability is not that great, doing other stuff like maybe working on a pretty easy practical and assignment or working out and that and coming back later uh, in the evening when I'm a bit more awake. Um, that, you know, working when it actually suits my brain and suits my learning style is something that I never implemented uh, in normal times at Varsity because I was just, you know, going to lectures, feeling bad about skipping lectures because I'm paying for them and, you know, not actually learning anything sitting in the lecture hall. So definitely something I'm going to implement going forward. I'm not going to all of my lectures in the future. Even if there are good lecturers, lectures and good lecturers, if you're half asleep in the lecture, there's no point in going anywhere rather catch it up on your own time. So yeah, that's lesson number one. The next thing I've learned is to be far more detailed and far more good about making detailed breakdowns and lists of what I need to get done for a specific assignment or a specific task or a specific subject. Everyone's got a to-do list and everyone's got things that they need to do and you can even go and chuck it in your Google Calendar and whatever, break down each day of what you need to do. But writing out a specific list of tasks and small little subtasks that I need to do for each assignment and each practical and each exam even has really helped me, especially for my EMK practical. I had about 25 items in a list of things that I needed to get done and things that I needed to work on, like getting this small subsection working or getting this light to work or getting this done. And now when I'm, I'm busy studying for an amplifiers test on Monday, I need to go through the lecture slides, I need to go through the class notes, I need to do past class tests, I need to go look at my tests from this semester. And just that detailed breakdown has really allowed me to get started and throw myself into work when it comes time to do so. When I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and I've got to start thinking about, oh, what am I going to work on or what do I need to do in order to meet all the requirements for this practical or this assignment, no, have a detailed list and then just hit out one of those items. Focus on that one item until it's finished and move on to the next. Might be a simple solution, but having uh, worked on it more and gotten better at it myself during this lockdown, it's something that I need to implement more and more and that's so important for me. Number three, I kind of already mentioned, but it's working at a time that suits you and not when you're told to work. Um, you know, very much at Varsity, uh, lectures are predominantly scheduled towards the mid-morning and early afternoon, which doesn't work for me because I'm pretty tired during those times and find my concentration waxing and waning at around that time of day. And so, yeah, really uh, focus and work at a time when it suits me and not when lecturers and a schedule, a pre-made schedule dictates it and then you know filling that extra time with play or chilling or low intensity work like email or admin or that um, just read a big difference to my schedule and especially being at home like having like an hour or two lunch break in the middle of the day where I sit and talk to my family and eat lunch and talk to the dogs and that and maybe play around on my computer or sit here in the sun and read and that um, it's been really nice and pleasant that it's made me feel a lot more calm and that during my varsity day and I've gotten, I think, a lot more done than I have at some days at Varsity when I'm busy with lectures the whole day, 
They don't actually absorb anything. I don't work on my practicals or my assignments at all. So definitely working when it's good for you. Biggest tip. Next tip is to ask for more help. Uh, even when it's stupid questions that you need to ask. In particular, working on practical and that, my friends and I were often messaging each other to ask like, have you done this section? Have you got this implementation working? Where should I look in the textbook for this? And we really sped up each other's workflow because a lot of my friends were on a tight deadline because they were finishing other assignments and practicals before coming to work on the big microprocessors one. And so, yeah, I found just, you know, it's easy to, to get into that trap of thinking that I can't ask for help, I'm going to be stupid or I'm distracting my friends or I really need to figure this out myself. But being unabashedly uh, curious and right and like, verbose with your questions to your lecturers or to your friends and that uh, obviously you don't be parasitic you need to give and you need to help your friends as well when they need help but like that asymmetric balance where i help you with this assignment because i'm ahead of it you can help me in that one and just asking more questions and asking for help and not getting stuck on silly little things where it's like you input you're inputting the wrong number into a calculation or you using the wrong formula or you've forgotten to set a register one line of code in your software and it's making you your code buggy and not work you know simple questions asking friends and lecturers and people on your whatsapp groups for <laughs> different subjects and that asking for help more regularly uh, can really speed up your workflow and can really speed up your varsity experience i'm definitely going to take that forward i've often felt in the past that like i can't ask for help because i'm being needy and like i'm bothering my friends and not giving enough in return trying not to be parasitic but i think you know just advancing in your work and trying and being helping each other and getting help from your friends and from your lecturers and that is much better than being stuck and struggling and that and allows you to work faster and better and then hopefully pay it back to those people that helped you in the first place and then the last tip is obviously to persevere. This has been a tough few months for everyone. This has been one of the hardest semesters at Varsity in particular because it's the third year of computing engineering. I haven't been doing all of the subjects I should have been because I'm redoing some, but my friends and that, you know, oh, just pushing through and grafting. We're about to finish the semester after this last week of exams now. Um, and just a little bit every day, you know, working on that assignment every day, working on one little piece of your code, working on one maths problem that every single day, as much as possible, as often as possible, uh, those little bits add up and like they add up to like incredible things like a 78% for a microprocessor's practical that I never thought I'd get a really good understanding of amplifiers that after the first semester test, I thought I was going to have to deregister and then I was going to fail the entire subject. And so, yeah, just a little bit every day, taking the long view on things and a big, uh, larger perspective on one or two varsity modules in the context of your entire life, not meaning that much, but still doing well at them after, you know, lots and lots of work, small bits of work every day. And I think the semester has shown a lot of people that they're actually a lot more powerful than they know in that. I know quite a few people, as shit as Corona has been, in particular for work and for productivity, staying at home has been much better for them. They've gotten a lot more done. They've been able to learn at their pace. They've been able to implement systems and time, as times and ways of working, like I've talked about, that has really suited their academic performance. And so, yeah, you know, there is positivity. There are good things happening at the moment. And obviously, privilege and all of those things, we don't need to go down the rabbit hole of providing excuses and defending our viewpoints and our positivity at such a bad negative time in the world. But yeah, there is optimism and things can go right if you just persevere often enough. So on that good, happy, optimistic, slightly naive note, I shall leave you. I'll see you in the next video. Probably after my last two exams, I got an exam on Saturday and I got an exam on Monday. Microprocessors and amplifiers, then I'm done. Hey, then two weeks of holiday. I'm gonna try and not play too much Fortnite in it and hopefully work on my web development stuff and that. And try not to get distracted by this fish tank either. I got a new fluorescent bulb yesterday, which is balancing on these old pile of Rick Royden books and Winnie the Pooh books. But yeah, fish tank's looking good. And thank you very much for watching. Catch you in the next one.